بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Everyone shall taste death. Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Every soul shall taste death. So the believer should be in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reminding himself that this is all going to pass. All of this, all the beauty that we see in the creation here. All the bad thing, our trials and tribulations, everything is going to pass. And that when we do sin, even the enjoyment of following our desires, that will pass. For example, if a person commits, they're tested with uh, zina, with committing adultery and fornication. This activity, which is impermissible in Islam, hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and very serious, a very serious sin, one of the major sins, the pleasure and enjoyment of it lasts for such a brief time. When a person commits that act, that in fact, maybe five minutes, and sometimes less, of pleasure that a person enjoys, and then if they're a believer, they feel sorrow after that. They feel shame at what they did. That they did what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. And they feel remorse in their heart. That is if they're a believer. Or that is if they still have some iman left. And so this dunya, this life in this world, is fleeing. And some people, وَأَثَرَ الْحَيَةَ dunya. Some of the people, they prefer the dunya. They prefer this life over the next. Many people, in fact, because they don't remember Allah at all. And they don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. And they engage and follow their desires in totality. But the believer is preparing for that day of death, which we don't know when that's going to happen. We don't know if we have five seconds left. We don't know if we have five minutes left. We don't know if we have five years left. All of that is written with Allah. al hayyu al qayyum That's written with Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The one who gives us life, the omnipotent, the ever-living. Yuhyi wa yumit. He gives life and he causes death. That's with him, Subhanahu. So what should the believer focus on? How can the believer prepare? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in an authentic hadith, alayhi salatu wasalam, regarding the things that would be left behind for the believer. Qala alayhi salatu wasalam, عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يتبع الميت ثلاثة أهله وماله وعمله فيرجع اثنان ويبقى واحد يرجع أهله وماله ويبقى the Prophet ﷺ said, as was reported by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said alayhi salatu wasalam, that the one who dies will be followed by three. His family, 
his wealth, and his deeds, meaning the deeds that he did in this life, the good and the bad of them. So two of them will return, and one will stay with him. His family will return, and his wealth will return. But what is left for him is his deeds. And this was related by this was in collected in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, let us know that when we die, those three things will follow us. But two of them will return after our funeral. Meaning that we can't benefit from our wealth then. If you were a millionaire, if you were a billionaire, if you only had a few pennies, now it's over. It will not benefit you. And your family, they cried over you. They wept at your procession, perhaps, depending on your family relationship. And after the funeral, soon thereof, after time, those wounds will heal, and perhaps you may be forgotten, or not forgotten, but you will only be something, a, a brief memory, because they had to move on in their lives, so they left. Perhaps your wife will remarry, or your husband, or what have you. Your children will continue on, long after you're in the grave. And may Allah have mercy upon us all and the believers everywhere. But what will be left for you then is your deeds. How did you live your life? Did you do righteousness? Did you go do good? Did you curse the people? Did you fight the people and be argument argumentative? Did you pray? Did you fast Ramadan? Did you have debt that you didn't pay? Did you steal and cheat from the people? All of those things. The good and the bad will be left. And that's all you will have to be accounted for, to, a, to have as a source of reckoning when Allah reckons your affairs on the day of judgment. And you will face either the punishment or the comfort of the grave. Because it's over. This life will be over for you. It's a short period of time. How many billions of people passed on before us? And how many will come after us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So prepare, use this dunya, this life is Dar al Amal. And the Akhirah is Dar al Jaza. Meaning that this life is the time and the place for doing deeds. And the hereafter is the place for receiving your reward, meaning it's over. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.